Setting Cheat Sheet. I'm Sarah Olivieri. I'm a number one international best-selling author, former executive, former lousy goal setter. And now I love helping nonprofits and their leaders change the way they run so that they can make a bigger impact without getting overwhelmed or burning out. And I am finally great at setting goals. And this is one of my favorite topics to teach. Today, I'm going to be teaching you kind of as a two-part mini-series. So first, we're going to talk about how to actually set those goals and the secret that I learned a number of years ago that made my goal setting significantly better. And then I'm going to give you a 10-point cheat sheet of questions to ask yourself when you're setting goals to make sure that you set better goals than you would without the check sheet, cheat sheet. I'm going to give you the cheat sheet in slides today, but when we send out the recording, we'll have a link to download the cheat sheet. So don't worry if you're taking notes frantically, you're going to get that. Or if you're watching the recording, you should find the uh, link to the cheat sheet in the description below. So let's start with part one, how to set those goals. So here's the thing. People always, lots of advice on setting goals, set your goal, how to set your goal, smart goals. What they don't tell you is that goals come in pairs. That's right. So oftentimes, if you've struggled with either achieving your goals or setting great goals, the problem probably has been that you were missing one of the pairs of the goals. So the pairs basically go like this, action, outcome. Action, you could think of as reaction. And when we plan our goals, we actually want to make sure that we are reversing the order I have here and setting our outcome first and then deciding on the action. You'll get better results if you do it that way than if you pick your out action first and then set your goal for the outcome. So this is kind of really simple, but when you start writing your goals these this way as pairs, you will turn what was originally a goal into the first steps of a plan. So um, question about outcomes or outputs, you can think about them as outcomes, outputs, reactions. The key indicator of whether or not you're an outcome or an action is if it's something that you don't have direct control over, then it's an outcome. If it's something that you pretty much have control over, then it's an action. So I can make 50 call, phone calls. I have the, the ability to just pick up the phone right now. Nothing's stopping me. But I don't have the ability to have 50 phone conversations because that requires another human being to pick up my call on the other end of the line. And I can't forcibly or magically just instantly have them appear every time I call. So having the conversations is an outcome. It's out of my control. So what are we going to do with these two parts? Well, we're going to do the same thing with each part. We need to have a basic description of the goal, and we need to really clearly define what it looks like when it's done, going a level deeper. Um, I'll give you some examples here. So I just gave you one example of, you know, um, have 50 conversations. So definition, that's a really simple one. Um, so the description would be just, you know, um, have conversations and the definition of done built right into what I said before is have 50 conversations. So if I have a corresponding action, um, I'm going to think of probably not 50 phone calls because I know uh, everybody is going to answer the phone. I'm, maybe I'm going to make 100 phone calls. And the definition of done, I could say, well, if I've done 100, that's like all that makes sense. And if I haven't reached my 50 conversations, so be it. Or I might say, I will call and call and keep adding more and more resources until I get to that 50 conversations, no matter what. Here's an example of a personal goal. So uh, lots of times, New Year's, people are thinking about losing weight. 
So the outcome might be to lose weight, right? We can't, if only we could presto change change our bodies with the snap of a fingers. Um, all sorts of people would be happy in many, many ways, but we can't. <laughs> so, um, and losing weight is one of those things that's really an outcome. So if losing weight is the outcome, the definition of done might be you've lost 10 pounds or you've gotten to a certain target weight. Now, what is the action goal associated with that? Well, it could be doing a specific diet or it could be just eating healthy. Um, let's say your goal is to eat healthy in the new year. Well, how do we, that would be the description, eat healthy. It could be as specific as you want. Um, and how do we define that as done? Well, this is a really tricky one. Super true for your business goals as well as your personal goals. We're talking about establishing some sort of habit or routine. So our definition of done is going to have to do with ensuring that we've established that routine. So we might have an example like it will when I have followed my new healthy eating plan 90% of the time for three weeks in a row. That's one definition of done. And I'm going to add a second definition of done. And I'm confident that I have established the new routine. So there I've doubled up on my definition of done just to make sure I've really got it, right? So that those are two examples. I'll give you one more example of the paired goals here. So for an outcome, let's say something I'm sure many of you want. Give me a hi in the chat if you want this or in the comments if you're watching the recording. Do you want to increase the number of active donors this year? Do you want to increase the number of active donors this year? Um, yes, yes. I know everybody should want that. So um, we should then define, right? What is the definition of done? And put your definition of done. Do you want to double your list? Do you want to increase it by a certain percentage, 30%? Do you want to just go from one number to another number? I like to use percentages when I'm thinking about list building because then I can kind of check myself, right? If I said I wanted to 50X my list, that's kind of unrealistic probably. Um, and I, But I might not know that if I just wrote it as numbers. But you could say, do I want to go from 200 active donors to 350 active donors? Um, so pick how, much, how many active donors do you want to add to that list? And you might define what an active donor is. I would say an active donor is someone who donates at least once a year. And so what is the action type goal that pairs with that? If you know the answer, go ahead and put it in. Uh, but there are a number of right answers. So don't worry about being wrong. Um, so you might hire um, a marketing or copywriter specialist to write new messaging for you, right? And the definition of done could be when that messaging is in all of your communications, you've swapped out old messaging for new messaging and you are now actively using the new messaging. That might be one. And in fact, you might have several action goals that are paired with a single outcome goal. You might decide that you might realize, well, hey, we're only sending, we're only emailing our active donors occasionally. Maybe we're going to start emailing them every week, right? So what's the definition of done? This is a tricky one again. This is one of those routine action goals. So the goal is to establish the routine. And how do you define when the routine is established? So you might say, we have emailed our list every week, once a week, uh, for X number of weeks in a row. Let's say however long you think it'll be to establish that habit and process in your organization. So six weeks in a row, eight weeks in a row, and maybe you'll add in whenever we're doing a routine type goal. I like to add in that we're confident that the routine has been established. Um, so those are the things you need to know about setting those goals, the nuts and bolts of setting those goals. 
But there's part two here, which is we have to choose better goals, right? And I'm sure most of you have more goals than you're actually able to do. Give me a a yes or a hi or a thumbs up or just a number one. If you have more goals in your head than or on paper than you can actually do. Yes, I got an amen. Awesome. Yeah. So you probably, so here is my list of 10 questions to ask. Now you can ask all 10 of every goal, um, or you can just cherry pick the ones that make sense for your goal. And if you're frantically taking notes as I go through these slides, know that the recorded version of this is going to have a link to a cheat sheet that you can print out or keep on your computer. So number one, how will achieving this goal actually help move us forward? Right, you'd be surprised how many times I've asked this question or clients have asked this question and they'd be like, well, actually, it's not going to help us that much. It just seems like we should do it. I'll give you an example of one of my own goals. Every now and then it comes around, well, should Pivot Ground be a B Corp? Should we apply for our B Corp status? We certainly would qualify But the truth is, it probably won't make that much difference. And so as that goal comes around and it gets taken off the list again and again for exactly this reason, because achieving that status won't really make a difference. It won't really move us forward that much given our current situation. Second question you can ask, and these are in no particular order. I've kind of clumped them in in one way, but it doesn't really matter what order you ask them as long as you ask them. What secondary impacts will achieving this goal have, right? So maybe if you get this thing, then you can get another thing. Maybe if you have... 100 donor, 100 new donors, you'll also then be able to reach your next goal of getting more donors even more easily. Um, what secondary impacts will it have, right? So some goals, you achieve them and they don't really, they're not building blocks, at least not now. And other goals, when you ask this question, you'll realize if we achieve this goal, we will unlock. It's like unlocking a new level in a video game. You, we will unlock a whole new level for ourselves. So maybe you've feel, been feeling overwhelmed and you've thought about setting the goal of hiring an assistant, something I highly recommend for every executive director and lots of other people out there. But if you're an executive director or if you're a board member here, Think about pushing to get an assistant for your executive director, because once you've achieved the goal of hiring an assistant, oftentimes you are then able to achieve all sorts of other goals that you just weren't able to do today. Um, Another question you might ask is, is this really the best way to achieve the desired result? Great story um, from a client recently. They were thinking about, should we build a building? Should we build a building? And I said, well, why do you want to build a building? What What is the thing you're looking for? And they had some great answers, but one of the answers was that it would increase our awareness. And I thought about that and I, and we talked about it and I said, well, is that really the best way to increase your awareness, building a building? And pretty quickly, the answer came out that, well, for the cost of building a building, we could do so much marketing. Everybody would know who we were and we could blow our awareness out of the water. Here's another uh, question you can ask. What happens if we don't do anything? right? This is a really important one that I think, especially in the nonprofit space, people don't ask themselves enough. Another way you might phrase this is what's the cost of not taking action? So you might find two things. One, you might find, well, if we don't, if we don't do this, nothing will happen. So we can push it off. We can just take that one off the list for now. Nothing's going to happen. Or you may realize, well, by not taking action, by not fixing this problem, it's actually costing us a lot of money. Maybe we're losing staff. Maybe we're losing donors. You know, maybe you aren't emailing your list, right? 
what's the cost of not emailing your list? If you just stay not emailing your list, what are you missing out on? And that's going to help you decide if it really makes sense to do this goal now or later or not at all. How important, how important is it that we work on this goal now? Goals and timing are really important. If you've been following me on my work with the impact method, you may have heard me say when we set our goals in the impact method, we actually put every goal into two ways of prioritizing. One, we order them um, about when we're going to do them. And second, we order their priority. And then we know really what we always need to be working on first. So how important is it that you work on this now? What would happen if we waited on this goal, right? So similar to not doing it all at all, but what would just happen if you wait? If nothing would happen, if there's no cost to waiting, then by all means, you've got too many goals on your plate already, so push it off. But if waiting might cost you a lot, maybe you'd miss an opportunity if you waited, then you should absolutely think about maybe doing this one sooner. What assumptions are we making? This is a really important question because sometimes you're assuming that something's going to work that isn't, or you're assuming that, let's say, you know, here's one, you wouldn't have known this necessarily, but let's say you were assuming you could hold your annual event and then boom, coronavirus. Not so true after all. Um, but what are you assuming? Are you assuming that the technology isn't available? Are you assuming that it would just cost too much to get help? And in fact, maybe there actually is an, uh, an alternative that you can afford, or maybe the cost of not doing it means that you should just do, you know, pull whatever strings you can so that you can actually afford that thing that you really need. And oftentimes we just ask, especially when it comes to money, questions about can we afford it or not? But what assumptions are you making when you ask that question? Are you really assessing how much money achieving that goal would bring in? Are you factoring that into the equation? For some of you, I bet you are. And I bet for a lot of you, you're just asking, can we afford this? And not asking, what will this bring us financially and for other things? We're almost at the end here. Um, my next tip is, would our results be better um, if, uh, be better, I think I have a typo here. Would our results be better if we had um, something else in place already? Would our results be better on this if we had something else in place already? I don't have a typo. I'm just tripping up on words. Um, so in other words, does it make sense to do another goal before we do this one? If we wait till something else, some sort of building block goal is done, will the results on this goal be even better or even easier to achieve? Are we sure we will have buy-in from the people we need help from in achieving this goal? Most of your goals, you're not going to be able to achieve all on your own. Give me a hi if you know you need help. You know you need help, right? Give me a yes if you know you need help in achieving most of your goals. Yes, yes, thank you. Yes, you know you do. We all need help. No person is an island. No nonprofit person can do it on their own. So ask yourself, is there some sort of buy-in that you need to get? before it really makes sense to set this as a goal. And finally, I say the biggest one for last, do we have the resources, this could be money, time, or expertise in place to accomplish this goal now? Do we have those resources in place to get going on it and to, to just nail it, drive it home and make it happen? So if you do, then ask yourself, is working on this goal the best use of those resources, right? So you might have the resources, but you might say, actually, is it the best use? No, we could be doing something else with those resources. Or 
if you don't have the resources, ask yourself, are there some initial steps that we should be taking now to make sure that we acquire those resources? And there are a number of people I've spoken with who they want to work with me, they want to learn the impact method, but they don't quite have everything ready. They don't quite have the resources yet. And so my question to them is, what are you going to do or how can I help you make a plan now to get the resources? Because if you just say, oh, we're not ready or we can't afford it and you don't make the plan to be ready or afford it, chances are you're never going to get there. So think about the resources And if they're the best use of resources, and if you need the resources, how are you going to make a plan to get them? That is all we have for our training today. I would love to take a few minutes if you put in the chat 